Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Comfort Circle Talk About It Tuesday. And so, I'm just going to start up Facebook, and then we will get started. So, let me just start Facebook. And so, hello, Facebook. We have Facebook. We have YouTube. Bam. Both of them. So, I am going to get started in prayer. I'm going to pray. Then we're going to get started. It's a really good one. So, um, let me just turn this down. It's a really good song. So, um, I'm going to pray and we're going to get started. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this time that we are in. And God, we just thank you for your perfect alignment. We thank you for everything that you are doing in this season, God. We just thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Father, we thank you for your word being spoken on tonight. We thank you for seeds being planted and seeds being deposited into the hearts of your people. And Father, we ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. So, guys, today, tonight, this evening, we're going to talk about split ends. And so, as you can see, my hair is done, it's trim, trim nicely. Um, and it goes perfectly, like perfectly with what we're talking about tonight. So, split ends. Let's talk about split ends a little bit for those who don't know. So, for people who grow their hair, who want their hair to grow, um, your hair grows, you know, it grows every now and then. Um, the hair may be a little off. So some parts will be shorter than the other, than the other part. Um, some parts may break off. Some parts may be unhealthy. Um, so when that happens, then the ends of the hair start to split off. When the hair is no longer healthily growing, then that is when it starts to split off. It starts to like break off. And so what that means is your hair can be like it could, it could be all the way down, all the way down to here. But if it's splitting, if it keeps splitting off, it doesn't matter how long it looks, it's damaged, it's broken. And if you want it to grow properly, you have to cut it off. You have to trim all the dead ends off. You have to trim the split ends off. Because that's when it's split, that means something's died and it, it stopped growing. Death is when something stops growing. When something stops growing, stops growing, that means that there's death in the hair. And so in order for it to come back to life, things have to be cut off. And so um, what I have from that is a parable. Um, a parable that Jesus talked about in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verses 24 to 30. So this, I believe it was last week. Last week, the Lord is really speaking to me about the wheat and the tear, how he said that in due time, he is the one that will do the separating. And just because, you know, we may see, oh, that, that, you know, the, the wheat and the tear, um, the weeds and the wheat, the dead things and the actual fruit that's growing, we can see, you know, Sometimes we can, you know, spot out the, the wolves and the sheep's clothing, you know, for lack of a better term. And God is saying, I, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. You just wait and you just take your time. You know, don't try to do my job. Don't try to play God. Um, and, you know, God is saying that he knows. He knows everything that goes on. There's nothing that goes on 
that he isn't aware of already. So he's saying, I know. And this will make a lot more sense um, when I read the story, if you haven't heard it before. And actually, I'm going to get it in... Um, maybe amplified. Amplified, I love amplified Bible. Um, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24. And guys, this song that's playing in the back and as you're listening to it, I love this song. Um, it's called Heaven's Secret. And I'm just going to pause a little bit. It's going to start replaying um, again in a little while. But I love this song. It says... I can't think. Of, I can't think of it right now because it's singing another part. But um, it's. I think it's about to play. Let's see. No, it's not. But um, we'll we here. Don't worry. It's really. It's so good. I remember the lyrics. Now it says, um, "As if your love wasn't enough, you pro- are they about to? Yeah, there it is. You can hear it." <laughs> And so I just think that's it's so beautiful. Um, this song is it's new by a band called Wilder, a movement called Wilder, um, to celebrate the different cultures and ethnicities coming together to lift up a sound before the Lord. And I just love it because it's saying, um, you know, it's saying that God's love for us is enough. And saying, if all He gave, to, if all He gave to us was His love, that would be enough. But it's saying, not only does He love us, but He reveals His secrets to us. Why does He do that? Because He considers us friends. And so we'll we'll see that later on as you know as I'm speaking, but I just wanted to highlight the song because this is like this this is on my playlist right now on repeat. And so Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 30, um, amplified reads weeds among wheat. Jesus gave them another parable to consider, saying, "The kingdom of heaven is like a man." who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, resembling and looking like the wheat. And so he put weeds, he put seeds um, of weeds, weed seeds, if you will, resembling wheat. And put them put them among the wheat so that people won't know what it really is. It's hidden, hidden sin, hidden evilness, and went away. So when the plant sprouted and formed grain, the weeds also appeared. So it says the servants of the owner came to him and said, "Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field?" Then how does it have weeds in it or tares or, you know, an, a foreign plant? And so it says, he replied to them, an enemy has done this. The servant asked him, then do you want us to go and pull them out? And this is what the master says. He says, no, because as you're pulling weeds out, you might also uproot the wheat, the wheat that I have planted, while you're trying to take down the weeds that the enemy has planted. And so the master says, let them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. 
but gather the wheat into my barn. And so what I just, I love about this, as I said, is it reminds me of, of my hair experience today um, in the sense of, okay, you know, all the, my hair is, is here. And so when you have, so my hair, it, it's coily, you know, 4C, if you ever checked out the porosity, most likely it would be 4C, the most coiliest one, um, really tight, you know, they call it nappy. And so if my hair, when it's wet, it is like really scrunched up. It really is coiled. And so as you are looking, it may look like you can't tell if the hair is even or not because it's all packed in together. It's still in its baby stages. It's still in its coiled up stage. But as you take the hair and you comb it and you tease it out and you detangle it and you comb it out, well, you know, you, you comb it out, blow dry it, um, blow dry it, straighten it. And then even you, you, it, you see it, you comb it out, it still looks like it's fine. You blow dry it, it, you know, you can see a little bit of a difference, but so the hair, when it's, when it's more coiled, when it's more, you know, packed together at it, that's more of the seeds being planted. They all look the same. And so then the blow drying stage, when you're combing it out and blow drying it, you can see a little bit of it. You can see a little bit of a difference and say, hey, you know, this isn't all the same. There's something that's uneven about this. There's something that is off, you know, off kilter, off centered about, you know, this hair. It's not all the same way right now. There's something that's off, um, you know, we see that and what we have to know and understand is that God sees that. I mean, God knows it all from the beginning, but we don't. God already knows that there's, you know, there's some hairs in there that need to be trimmed off because there's, they're dead. There's some hair in there that's grown. It's been growing, but it really hasn't been splitting off. There's a lot of split ends in there. There's a lot of dead ends in there. And you they have to be cut off so that, you know, it it's it's not bad looking. You know, dead hair, dead anything is, is not, you know, good. And so what we have to know and understand is that just because it looks one way to us doesn't mean that God doesn't see the difference. So we can see, you know, it what it looks like to us is everything is packed and it's good. God already sees the split ends. He's already seen them ahead of time. He's already seen the wolves and sheep broken ahead of time. He already knows what's in what's hidden in the seed stages, we have to comb, we have to tease the hair out, comb it out. We have to discern. We have to see all these things. We have to pray to God, seek and pay attention to people, and pay attention to their so pay attention to their actions, their surroundings, how their you know behavior is, and looking at all of that, we see all of that. And then, as we're seeing all of that, we have to blow dry the hair out, which is where we're starting to see a difference. And, you know, the servants say, hey, didn't you sow, you know, good seed? Isn't that supposed to be, you know, good hair? You know, it's being blow dried out. You know, it, it's supposed to look good, but it's looking a little, you know, uneven. I don't know there's something wrong. And so, you know, God says, just let it grow out, you know, because if you cut it now, you're going to cut good hair among with the bad hair. And as, you know, as my hairdresser said today, you don't want to cut anyone's, um, I think they said the word of length. You don't want to cut anyone's length off. You don't want to cut anyone who is growing off, those who are really persevering 
those who are really taking serious time out to do what God has called them to do. In the midst of those who are doing wrong, knowing that, in the midst of those who are just doing whatever they want to do, living whatever kind of life they want to live, not living holy, not living rightly, but they're still in the church. They may still be in leadership. They're still leading and guiding people, but they're not hearing from God. They're not hearing from anyone but themselves. And so that's what he's saying. He's saying, wait until it's washed. Wait until it's combed out. Wait until it's blow dried. Wait until it's flat ironed. And then check to see the length. Check to see the uneven parts and cut it from there. Because if you cut it too quickly, you may cut off valuable things. You may cut off the part that we want. And we don't want to cut anything off that we need. We only want to cut off the dead things. And so that's what this is saying. He is saying, God is saying, there are good people who make mistakes and we can think that they're of the devil and there are not good people who do right and we can think that they're good because they sing right, they look right, they talk right, they can dance right, but their heart isn't right. But the people whose heart are right, they may slip here or there. They may have an attitude here or there. They may, you know, not think right all the time here or there. But their heart is right. And so you can see in the beginning baby stages, they both look like they're the same. But as you continue to spend the time, allow time to tell Allow time to tell what is going to happen. And then use discernment. Ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me this person's ways. Holy Spirit, keep me safe from all her harm and danger seen and unseen while I'm in the presence of this person. Yeah, you know, and while I'm in this, this person's presence, because if they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know, I don't I don't want to be in their presence. I don't want to be in their surroundings. Um, so really praying asking God to be watchful and prayerful. Ask him to help you to be watchful and prayerful in the season, especially. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things saying it's about God and it's not. And we have to call it for what it is. Sin is sin. Um, no matter who does it, sin is sin, no matter what it looks like, it's all sin. So we have to just, yeah. um, so I'm going to go to John 15. As I told you with this song, I love it. Um, and it's talking about heaven's secrets. And let me go. And so as I'm as I'm finding it, John chapter 15, um, God says that he'll do the separating. It's not our job to separate, it's his job. Um, we don't have to separate. It's not our job. It's his. So John chapter 15. Um, again, reading it from Amplified Version. And it says, Jesus is the vine, followers are branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes. What does that say? He repeatedly prunes, which is cutting off and taking away. Why? So that it can bear much fruit, even richer and finer fruit. And that is exactly like the hair. That is like why split ends when it's dead, it's not, it's just continually breaking up. It's not bearing any good fruit. It's not bringing in real growth or real length. It says in verse four, remain in me and I will remain in you. 
But it says, just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. And say, neither can you bear fruit, produce evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. So if my hair is dead and it's continuing to break off in deadness, then there's no life. It's going to just keep splitting off and there's no life. And so it says, if we are not in him, then there's no life. And in him meaning in Christ. So it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bear much Otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. They gain such branches, they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Wow, that sounds just like Matthew 13, where it is saying the wheat and the tear and the tear or the weeds are gathered up and they're thrown into hell's fire and burned away. So we don't want to be burned away. We want to make sure that we're connected to him. We want to make sure that we are growing in him as wheat and not weeds. And so, it says, if you remain in me, my words remain in you. That is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit, Improve yourselves to be my true disciples. I have loved you just as the Father has lo- just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. And look at this: it says, "I have told you these things so that my joy and the del- Light may be in you, and that your joy may be made full and completely overwhelming. And so, to me, that is exactly what that is talking about. And being a friend, it says, I have told you these things. Jesus shared these secrets with us, He revealed these things to us that He's never, He had never revealed to anyone before. And this is him talking to the disciples, his true friends. And so it says, this is my command, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. And I love verse 14. It says, you are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. And it's not necessarily command like you know him being a commander and us being just lowly servants, but him telling us, him advising us what to do, like a big brother. And so it says in verse 15, I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends. That's what he says to us. I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from the Father. And so it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing. And that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give it to you. This is what I command you, that you love unselfishly and seek the best for one another. And so Jesus, he gave us a 
statement, he gave us access to heaven's secrets, like this song is singing about, which is why I love it so much, because, like it says, you know, he loves us. And not only are it, you know, it, it skips, you know, it says servants. And I believe we talked about here before the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he was a son and he left and he was willing to come back and be a servant. Um, but, you know, the, the father restored him back to sonship. But in John 15, we skip from servant to son, but we go to friend. And I just love that relationship um, imagery so much because, okay, yeah, you know, servant, we know submissive, you have to do what I tell you, you have to do what I command you because I'm your master, I rule over you. Son and, you know, child and parent, you have to do, again, what I tell you because, again, I'm over you. It's not as a servant, we have a closer relationship, but there's still a distance because there's a hierarchy. And so now we skip that and we tear that down and we bring that to friends. You're no longer a servant. You're not just my child. And you are those things. But most importantly, you're my friend. I'm revealing secrets to you because I love you. I'm revealing secrets to you because I cherish you. I'm revealing secrets to you because I trust you. I trust you with this information and I trust you to give it to the right people. And I trust you to share it with the right people when I give it to you. That's a relationship. That's trust. That's a friendship where he's saying we can be one now, not necessarily equal because he is fully God, but he's saying, I'm coming to you in a state of, I want a, a divine heavenly relationship with you. I want to be your very best friend because I love you that much. And that's what the song is saying. It's saying, you're saying you're loved. Just even if, if you love me and I was your servant, that would be enough. If you love me and I was just your child, that would be enough. But no, you love me so much that you want to be my friend. You want to tell me secrets. You want to share secrets with me just like you would with a best friend. And I think it's just so beautiful. And that shows how much God loves us. And he loves us even with the split ends. He wants to cut off the dead things in our lives. He wants to cut off the dead people in our lives so that we can grow more. So that we can become better, not to harm us, not to hurt us, but so that we can be better, so that we can be greater, so that we can reach our fullest potential. Even with muscles, I talk about it all the time, the muscles have to break down in order to be built back up. That's where the muscle comes from. It's broken down and built back up and broken down and built back up. That's where the curvature comes from, the breaking of skin and the rebuilding of it. The tearing down the skin and the rebuilding of it. Even the Ecclesiastes talk about, you know, there's a time to break down, there's a time to build up. This is a time of breaking down, breaking down everything in us that is not like God. God is tearing those things away. And that's it's a perfect day today, the first day of the month of Tammuz, which is the month of transition. So even as we know, with month being the sixth month of the year, and it is, you know, transition, today is the first day for the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish calendar, Tammuz, one Tammuz, the first of Tammuz. And it's saying there was a lot of deadly things that happened. There was a lot of things, there was a lot of bad things that happened. But it caused for a change to come. It caused for something to shift. In order for the transition to come, something has to die in order for new life to come. Something has to be cut off in order for us to grow more in a certain area, in a certain situation. He trusts us enough to build us up. 
he trusts and loves us enough to be torn down so that we can be built back up. So if you've had things dying, if you've had things cut off, if you've had people leave you, trust that you are in great company. Trust that you're in a season of transition where he's tearing things down. He's breaking it down. He's allowing it to die. He's cutting it off so that you can be built up even greater. So that being said, guys, be encouraged. Know that God is with us. He is with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. So no matter what it looks like, continue to walk. Continue to move forward. Continue to press toward the mark. And know that he is God. Know that he is good. And know that there is nothing that can stop you. So I thank you all for watching. And I will see you next week.